come up with new ideas, that's a different part of the brain. But in fact, that's not the case. The way the brain comes up with new ideas is it uses exactly these same circuits. And they, the fact is, it runs them in reverse. So the brain is very efficient at using what it has. And if it can use the same neural tissue for multiple functions, it generally does. And the, and the way the neuroimaging experiment worked was they had people in the scanner and they had them imagining various types of visual scenes, although their eyes were closed. And what they found was that they saw activity in exactly the same parts of the brain that you would see as if you were actually looking at something. <coughs> so it's like the brain actually uses this to run simulations. When you close your eyes and imagine something, especially if it's a visual scene, it's running these exactly in reverse. The reason this is important for creativity is because if the brain is using these exact same circuits for imagination, it means that the same limitations that apply to visual perception also apply to creativity. Since the brain is very efficient at categorizing things and running it forward with perception, it does exactly the same thing in terms of imagination. And it makes it extremely difficult, much more difficult, I think, than we give credit for, for coming up with new ideas. It means that new ideas will be heavily influenced by past experience, and the brain will tend to fall into the same kind of pathways in terms of thinking. Very difficult to get out of, and it's the reason why there are so few iconoclasts. The brain really isn't designed for coming up with new ideas on a regular basis. So the takeaways from the perception side is that the, the eyes do not uniquely determine what you see. Perception is largely based on past experience. And imagination suffers from the same limitations because it uses the same neural tissue. So how do you get out of it? Well, the key that we found, at least in our experiments, is novelty. So if you think about it, when you see something, if you've never seen it before, if it's completely novel, then your brain has a harder time relying on these tried and true pathways. And oftentimes, when you see something for the first time, you actually are seeing it truly for what it is. After you've seen it once, your brain just kind of pigeonholes it and it kind of thinks it's seeing it, but it's really not. It's really not looking at it in the same way. Same thing applies to imagination. The novelty is the key to breaking out of the same categorization pathways. And the bigger the novelty, the more likely the new neural pathways will be formed. So one of the things that I found in my research, at least for this book, in, in terms of talking to people that I consider modern iconoclasts, is the, the overwhelming majority of them had their aha and eureka mo moments in places outside their regular work. Restaurants seem to figure very prominently in, in people's eureka moments, largely because they've been traveling or they're in other places or they're seeing people or meeting people they've never seen before. But these are exactly the circumstances that prevent the brain from jumping to cate categories. Okay, the second area, the second function is fear.